All right, so this is actually a video I decided to randomly do. Uh, it's a result of me finishing part one recently at JoJo's in preparation for my one week uh, JoJo related content. Of course, I'm going to be doing cross verse videos during JoJo week. It's not just all inverse stuff, like not at all, because I think it's a lot more interesting to do cross verse. So keep that in mind when you tune into these uh, weekly things. We're going to try out the weekly. Uh, schedules for a month to see how it goes and yeah it's just something i want to introduce to the channel also this format for the versus battles a little different than um what it typically is so if you like this style let me know but anyways the two combatants today are dio brando from part one of jojo's bizarre adventure manga by the way i haven't seen the anime yet versus tell angor aka the force vampire from star wars rpg so that's a very obscure character so i'm very excited to use him i don't think he's ever been used in a versus battle so with that being said we're gonna break down the characters and decide who wins so i hope you enjoy let's begin now when lord joestar once nearly perished he mistaked a thief for his hero and this dirty man that he mistaked for his hero was a guy by the name of brando Joe Star, because he believed Brando saved his life, pledged to give him a favor that was forever in debt to. So, upon Brando dying, he requested Lord Joe Star to fulfill this favor and take in his son. Thus, we are introduced to young Dio Brando. Ambitious and evil, Dio did his best to run off young Jonathan Joe Star as kids. It went so far as Dio killed John's dog Danny basically to get revenge because Jonathan beat his ass because he pimp slapped his girl made her eat mud and then he did something else to him but he kept he basically pushed Jonathan to the edge and Jonathan had to put hands on him uh yeah so after that it, it just got worse and worse in terms of how he acted and where he was willing to go uh years pass and Dio is now into medicine with Jonathan pursuing archaeology Despite acting like they were friends, Dio was still seeking to take over the Joestar inheritance. Using medicine foreign to the area, he started to kill Lord Joestar slowly, and he was almost successful in killing him, but Jonathan discovered what was going on and stopped him. Enraged, Dio stole the stone mask from Jonathan. This mask was from the Aztecs and originally was kept by Lord Joestar. Now the stone mask would be used by Dio as revenge as he knew that blood activated the mask in a weird way so he was going to try to kill him with it. Dio went on to test the mask on a random person he had an encounter with. The mask turned that person into a zombified vampire kind of hybrid creature after Dio originally thought it killed him. Realizing the hidden power within the mask, Dio risked it all for the clout and would soon don the mask and go after Joestar. Thus, Dio Brando became a vampire, the sworn enemy to Jonathan Joestar, his former brother. His plans for world dominance in part one was cut short due to the heroics of Joestar and his friends, and Joestar died to prevent Dio from making it across the ocean and reviving. Part 1 Dio Brando is remembered for his goon lifestyle and his famous rise to power and nearly taking over the world. As for Tell Angor, it was pretty simple. Jedi and Sith, light versus dark side. This war waged for ages and despite being peaceful in scripture, the Jedi have to find ways to fight back. Because of this, an order splintered off from the normal Jedi Council. This order was known as the Silver Jedi. This order consisted of Jedi who were ready to combat the dark no matter what, no matter where, and no matter what cost. Tel Angor was the greatest among the Silver Jedi. This group hosted great Jedi theorists and they attempted to replicate a light version of dark side experiments. That is, make it easier to weaponize the light against the dark. Experiments were then conducted. Small successes happened and it seemed to give people power boosts. Desperate to make the ultimate weapon to end the dark side, the Order needed a volunteer to be exposed to the full light side of the Force. Being the greatest among them, Tell volunteered. He would be their Templar. Of course, this experiment went horribly wrong. Instead of merging with the light side, Tell was exposed to the dark and his own dark tendencies manifested and were intensified. 
His natural cockiness and ego made it evil. Instead of being of the Force, he had to consume the Force. Tal Angor died that day and born was the Force vampire, a perversion to the Force. Angor slaughtered his people and went on to become a vicious hunter. Despite his change, he still had his Jedi past training and skill. He used this to make hunting easier. He fed on the outskirts of the galaxy, spurning a hunt for this dark serial killer. Eventually, he got caught out in space surrounded by the dead on a stranded ship. The end of the Force vampire is unknown, with his role as an RPG character leaving his ending up to interpretation. Just as a bonus round, let me know who has a better story. Do you think it's the Force Vampire or do you think it's Dio? Whose story did you think was more interesting? Uh, this is kind of just like a fun round. It actually doesn't count towards anything, but let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm interested to see who you guys think is cooler. Dio, even in his youth, was exceptionally strong. He was able as a teen to casually kick a medium-sized dog dozens of feet, no problem. He also boxed Jonathan as a teen who was... Jonathan was quite big at the time, and he knocked him back several feet with one punch. Years later, there wasn't much strength feats for that brief period of time, but he did somewhat physically contend with a new vampire slash zombie. These creatures are casually superhuman and can tear apart humans, and this one punched through a small building in their fight. Soon, Dio acquired the mask. This strength buff was crazy. Newly transformed Dio could grip a brick wall one-handed and dig in with his fingers. His fingertips could casually slice a human skull in half. He then easily starts tearing apart the place and ragdolling Jonathan, and Street Wagon claims Dio is stronger than even the strongest of tornadoes, which casually one-shot houses, of course. Dio is put down and comes back a few chapters later even stronger. Plotting his world dominance, Dio reached his peak power towards the end of part one due to how many people he had absorbed. In a physical clash with Baron and Jonathan, Baron claimed Dio had five times more raw power than both of them. This means Dio's peak strength in part one is over five times the strength of both of them combined. When we know both of them combined could, you know, contend with and beat Tartarus, that means Dio, to me, is at least six times stronger than Tartarus, and Tartarus was somebody who could casually cut a cliffside off in one hit. Tel Angor was already a well-respected Jedi Knight prior to transformation. Assuming he was average Jedi Knight level, these tier knights can use force amplification to contend with beings like Wookiees, a massive alien species that can hold up collapsing mines and even kill force users barehanded, and Chewbacca physically overpowered Darth Vader, who can treat massive droids like toys. Angor wouldn't scale that high pre-transformation, but I think he would scale to someone like Clone Wars Kenobi in strength. Post-transformation, Angor was confirmed stronger, but not to a defined extent. He could ragdoll fellow Force users and often straight up overwhelm them via mauling. Given the consistency of how Angor mauled foes on the outskirts of the galaxy, he easily scales to and even above raging Wookiees. So both of these killers benefit from later amplifications. In terms of strength, I think Dio Brando late in part one had superior showings than what we know of Angor. His fingertips alone bisect human skulls like butter, and he got many times stronger after that. While I think Dio is stronger, I don't think it's to the point that Angor can't hang with him. Angor can contend with strength, but Dio has to have the edge. So both characters are a bit iffy on their speed, but they do have some showings, and we can at least use side scaling to get an idea of their speed. For Dio Brando, his best scaling comes off of Jonathan Joestar. In a late clash, Dio nailed Jonathan with an eye attack compared to a beam of light. Jonathan was able to react enough to make sure it wasn't a kill shot, showing that even a surprise uh, attack that was comparable to light, he could kind of react to. Given that Dio was at least equal in speed to Jonathan, but I think he's faster, um, it's fair to scale him off of that feat. Now, for Angor, 
he scaled to a Jedi Knight prior to transforming, and Jedi Knights can react in hyperspace, at which speeds are near the speed of light. Jedi also can react to laser-type attacks consistently throughout Legends and Canon. By the way, uh, the Force Vampire is a Legends character. Angor post-transformation should be slightly faster, but his amps were mostly power-related, not all speed-related. Like I said, both characters are not very interesting for examining speed, given their lack of achievements. However, I trust the Jedi's speed more than I do Jonathan jo uh, Joestar's. Similar to the strength ruling, this one isn't a massive gap. I do favor Angor for speed, but I don't think he outright blitzes. Before the first fire consumed him, Dio Brando with the stone mask on was capable of taking multiple gunshots to the torso. Pain is also a non-factor when the mask comes into play, allowing Dio to basically go until he drops. Even when getting cut in half by Joe Star, Dio can make strategic moves, showing he not only is a tank, but he retains his intelligence and his wit in these brutal scenarios. Given the perks of Regen as a vampire, Dio can survive with just his head. The way to permanently put down a vampire like Dio Brando is to destroy their brain completely. Anything less like a simple gunshot to the head, and Dio is likely to not stay down for very long at all. Dio also showed he can take hits from characters that scale to destroying cliff sides casually. So, he is durable, but that is multiple times scarier because he lacks the ability to feel pain and his regeneration is very good. It showed it was strong enough to basically stitch him back together after almost getting completely cut in half. With Angor, of course, we gotta go back to scaling off Jedi Knights. Jedi Knights on average with Force uh, Amps can withstand explosions that level houses and stuff like that. On top of this, they can take hits from Wookiees, which I scaled prior. Angor scales to this, but got amplified by the transformation. Angor can use the dark side to fight through injuries he sustains in battle. Angor has vampiric strength as well, which is an actual perk, and can use this to transfer his power to specific physical areas like strength or durability. Essentially, a temporary focused boost to an attribute is what he can do. If hurt, Angor can also heal himself with the dark side, although this would be limited to stuff up to like broken bones probably. But even if hurt, he can power through it and use his anger to nullify the pain. Now, for this verdict, it was pretty easy. Dio all the way. While Angor would no doubt be tough to put down, Dio can get hit all day and laugh it off. His regen and recovery is vastly superior, and I think in a war of attrition, Dio just outlasts Angor. Dio Brando has the durability edge. Dio Brando was always bright despite coming from the slums. What amplified his intelligence though was his evil ways. Essentially, Dio became a god tier manipulator early. Evidence of this surfaced when it was shown it took over a decade for Dio's true intentions to be discovered. This knack for manipulating things in his favor got so extreme that outside help had to convince Jonathan Dio was bad. Jonathan literally knew Dio was a killer at that point, but Dio simply is so manipulative he was convincing Joestar they were cool. Dio has a celebrated academic background as well, and extensive knowledge in medicine and poisons. Dio remained steps ahead of Baron Zapelli and Jonathan, and Baron had decades of experience under his belt. Dio is also a quick learner, catching Baron's foot, deducing how his energy worked, and then countering it on the spot. On top of this, there's a more subtle feat, but one I think perfectly shows how brilliant Dio really is. Dio learned all his moves and abilities by himself in a short period of time. This was the same time Jonathan learned decades of info in just two weeks. Dio is above that as he learned what Jonathan was taught on the spot. Jonathan had to be taught and conditioned, whereas Dio almost instantly learns. Dio is one of the rare characters you can fully trust to optimize his IQ and his cunning in combat. Now, on the surface, I would understand if people assumed you know, an animal-like killer like Angor was simple-minded. However, 
the lore says otherwise, which shocked me. Angor, as a Jedi, was actually quite smart. For being celebrated in any Jedi Council requires both intelligence and power feats. Angor was considered the best of the Silver Jedi, and given its militant role, no doubt Angor had to have several combat wins to rank up in the Order. On top of his Jedi training, which would include learning languages, history, engineering, piloting, martial arts, and strategy, Angor spent an entire month solely meditating and learning to prepare to be the vessel. This includes spending time with the celebrated theorists and scholars. Though their final experiment failed, their feat of manipulating the Force to the extent they did puts them on par with celebrated minds like Darth Plagueis, the master to Darth Sidious himself. Angor retained all of this knowledge after transformation according to the lore. Thus, he simply got that much more dangerous of a fighter. Now, I gotta say, Angor really surprised me. Even though he proved to be quite brilliant, I think Dio is on another level. Jonathan was called a 1 in a 1000 talent, but Dio was beyond him. They can learn decades of knowledge in days, and arguably moments for Dio. Angor is no dummy, but I trust Dio more to execute on the tactical end of the spectrum. Early on, Dio showed skill in psychological warfare. This prowess of his only developed more and more as he got older. Teen Dio showed off a 20th century sway technique and used excellent precision strikes to put down Jonathan, who was no slouch at the time. Dio also showed off skill with wrist locks and elbow strikes in later exchanges with Jojo, proving to be quite formidable in hand-to-hand. -hand. Dio also showed skill in adaptive combat, that is, he is skilled enough to evolve his game plan in combat. Dio also went toe-to-toe -to -toe with fighters that had decades of training under a master of Haman. Dio is a solid mix of street and technical skill. Again, this may surprise you. Angor is no slouch in the skill department. Given his status in the Silver Jedi, I think it's fair to assume he was either an aggressive duelist or a fast one. This means he likely used a Taru or Jim So, which gives an excellent background in martial arts. This is training that is compounded upon with his basic Jedi skill training. Angor would at least be a Clone Wars Kenobi skill fighter in hand-to-hand. -hand. Kenobi was able to brawl with Mandalorians and Jango Fett himself, people who have decades of training in combat as well as knowledge of multiple forms of martial arts. Angor doesn't use a blade anymore because of his, you know, newfound nature, but his background and his new power makes him a horrifying fighter up close. For the first time uh, in this battle, we have a tie in a category. I think Angor has a more extensive technical background when it comes to skill, but Dio is a better natural fighter. Both things kind of work to nullify each other, and I don't see skill being what sways this fight at all. So I'm going to have to give it a tie for skill. Now, for Dio, you know, at the end of part one, he's his strongest, but we're going to look back and review what he showcased before that. Dio early on was stated to have impenetrable luck that was borderline supernatural. This was remarked by Jonathan, who knew Dio for years. Uh, if it wasn't Jonathan, it was the poison guy. I, I believe it might have been the poison guy, but whoever it was, they knew, John, uh, they knew Dio uh, for a very long time, so they knew what he was capable of. Dio backed this claim about his luck up by avoiding dozens of bad situations. Dio, after first getting the mask, could recover from lethal gunshot wounds. He can slice human skulls casually and has unnatural balance. Dio then shows that if he manages to get a hold of you, and he chooses to, he can suck the life out of you. The effect begins instantly, and you end up a skeleton in the end. When hurt, Dio can steal life force and amp himself. He also can do this to amp himself in general, making him a nightmare to deal with in a populated area. Upon absorption, Dio can control you and make you do his bidding as a zombified vampire. Dio is an excellent user of some kind of form of hypnotism, as shown when Poco was mind-hacked into doing Dio's bidding. This seems to be a natural extension of his power to manipulate and control like he does with the zombies. 
Dio has complete control over his body according to him, which is important because at the very least it is a reference to his cellular energy control. Dio can use this to freeze your cells in your body if he makes contact or if you make contact with him. Dio can also use an eye attack that was compared to a beam of light that would have one shot Jonathan. Dio can also possess you uh, not uh, if he touches you, he can either possess you like take control of you or actually transfer over to you because he needs a new host body. He also showed he can neg hacks like sleep inducing techniques and energy hits. For gear, all Dio really has is a stone mask. This, if he puts it on you, will latch bones into your brain and zombify you. It also puts you under Dio's control. Now, for Angor, he does not roll with gear because he is a force vampire. Like I said before, his, his nature makes him more primal, so he doesn't carry anything like weapons. Angor does use the force for basic things like telekinetic blasts and physical amplification. Angor emits a dark side aura that intimidates and seems to almost boost him, and it does this passively, as observed by a medic in the lore. These waves of horror are so powerful that they can cause actual physical damage, and they can kill you if you are not strong enough to endure, and it's so bad that they say if you die from it, you die with a permanent look of horror on your face. Not only does he drain the force from you, but Angor is confirmed to be able to drain life energy as well if he wishes. This is of course called Vampiric Drain, and it's a little different than something like Darth Nihilus. The Drain also is confirmed to give Angor a power boost on top of restoring energy and healing. Angor is a perversion to the Force, which is why his abilities are so unique. He's actually the only one of his kind. Now for this verdict, again I'm calling it a tie. Better regen to Dio, while Angor has hacks that complement his fighting style exceptionally well. Given that both have hacks to counter, and even win in some cases, I don't see a definitive advantage. Let's get to the fight. Now, this is what I think would be the most likely fight outcome. This fight would start off as a physical brawl, with Angor utilizing a force push to get space, as Dio's punches are quite strong and he's like, yo... I don't really want to get hit by that. The vampire would then leap, using the force to blitz towards the recovering Dio. As Angor closes in, he grabs Dio by the neck, beginning the drain of his life force. To his surprise, the drain stops. Angor looks down to see his arm has been frozen. Dio would then smash the arm, causing it to blow up in pieces. As Angor stumbled back, he would use vampiric strength to lash out catching Dio as he closed in. Dio's jaw would break and he gets thrown. However, Dio regens and attacks again, avoiding another telekinetic push. Gritting his teeth as the vampiric fear is hurting him, Dio grabs Angor's neck, and as Angor grabs his arm with his remaining arm, Dio uses his other hand to slam the mask onto Angor's face, causing the vampire to scream in pain. As Angor stumbles, Dio rushes in, freezing Angor with his ability. Then, with a final massive punch, Dio shatters the forest vampire to pieces, bringing the exhausting exchange to an end. So, in the end, I favor Dio. Um, Dio, while he's not as fast, he is a little stronger, he's a lot smarter, and I believe his hack of turning you frozen would be quite useful to a character who's trying to get up close, get his hands on you, and drain you. Because they both kind of counteract with the draining, that would neg it for a little bit, and I believe Dio would use that freezing hack to take the victory as he does use it in character. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. If you're new to either of these characters, let me know what you thought of them. Let me know if you like the layout of this versus battle. Anyways, it's been your favorite villain. Happy New Year's, and I will see y'all later.